What is it, my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crowded Lake. Today, we're reading New Rules, a standardized fanfic by Becca911 on Wattpad. If you'd like to check out the fic or the author for yourself, both of those links will be in the description below. The synopsis for the book is, He told himself dreams were for children because in a world like this, dreams were what got you killed. Could you use all the Google Form link in the description to recommend future fix? And if you haven't read the first two books of this series, because this is the third book, or heard my reading of it, I recommend you do so now before anything actually starts up, because this you, you need the connections. It's good. <laughs> Chapter 1. There were very few things that Logan couldn't comprehend. He could understand any math that came his way. He knew rules and regulations inside and out, and he could find a solution to most problems easily. As he stared at the table, his list of incomprehensible things grew by one. What is that? He asked slowly. A stack of pancakes? Virgil answered smartly, his smirk growing as Logan frowned. Roman interrupted, clapping his hands together. That, my Scooby Noob, is my greatest creation. Logan stared at the stack of golden pancakes and couldn't fathom why. The breakfast food was covered in honey that drooped onto the plate lazily, and there were marshmallows stuck on top and on the sides. Logan was also sure that there was cotton candy sticking up in tufts. It looked like a shortcut to diabetes. If they could get such a thing, of course. <laughs> I... He took a deep breath, almost choking on the overwhelming aroma of the monstrosity. Even if we aren't technically corporeal, a balanced breakfast is not a requirement, Roman finished, grinning triumphantly. Just try some, Logan. Maybe you'll like it. Logan shook his head. Most certainly not. I cannot imagine Padden would agree with such an unhealthy- Oh my goodness gracious! Logan sighed. He should really learn to stop saying reasonable things like that. He always ended up wrong. He hated being wrong. Patton, all, but flew towards the stack of death by sugar, wide-eyed and drooling. Roman, this is amazing! He gushed and Roman's chest puffed out in pride. Oh, can we eat it? Of course, the royal said, and cutlery appeared in Patton's hands. Why else would I create such a beauty? Instantly, Patton started at the stack of pancakes, Virgil and Ro Roman joining him after a moment of smugness. Cutlery appeared in Logan's hand, but he shook his head and set it down, backing away from the table and strange people at it. I refuse, the logical side said, raising his hands. I simply will not partake in consuming such a foolish, unhealthy meal. Roman squinted at him. You're always saying no, Microsoft nerd, he said shrewdly. You gotta try silly things sometimes. Dream a little. Dreams are usually logically flawed and statistically impossible, Logan told him, but Roman was already back to stuffing his face with sugar and unhealthiness. Logan sighed and rubbed his face. He didn't know why he tried. Giving the table a wide berth, he proceeded to put together a bowl of granola, two pieces of toast with jam, and a tall glass of orange juice. It was much better for him than a stack of pancakes literally dripping with sugar and preservatives. Logan shrugged to even think about what it would do to an average person. If Thomas ate that, he'd be severely sick. That's such a boring breakfast, Roman called to him, again stopping his ravenous attack to watch his logical friend. Come on, Logan, just try this. Yeah, Logan, Patton supplied. Logan let out a long breath. No, he said simply. Before they could ask again, he walked away, aiming for his room. He was in the mood to work on some puzzles, perhaps a Sudoku while he was eating to help wake up his brain. He felt quite sluggish this morning, and that would not do. Thomas needed to be sharp. His room was very isolated, which he enjoyed as it meant he was less likely to receive visitors that interrupted his thinking time. As he shut the door behind him, he took a moment to appreciate the silence and order in his room. His bed was tucked in the corner, that sheets perfectly tucked in, 
and cover without wrinkle. His walls were white, of course, and there was a crisp white desk pushed against the wall opposite of his bed. He sat his tray of food on it, glancing down at his neat stack of papers piled on the side. It was finances for Thomas, half-planned. He needed to finish those, but not right now. Typically, a brain was not working at full capacity until 10 a.m., so he had an hour to fill before he could work efficiently on such things. He pulled out a Sudoku book and a pen, taking a sip of his orange juice. He started with number three. Chapter two. At 11, 12 a.m., Locum put away his Sudoku and stepped outside his room. Roman, he called, straightening his tie. He needed to talk to the royal about some video planning that had been neglected until now. It wasn't entirely Roman's fault, and Logan had reasoned that with the incident with Dylan, still fresh memory, it would take the prince a little time to regain complete control of himself and his duties. There's a soft pop. You called? Roman said, stretching a bow. Ah, yes. It's come to my attention that video prep has been neglected in the schedule for the next video. The time needed for the whole recording must be altered. Do you have the data for the video prep? Roman grinned, a piece of paper appearing in his hand. Ten minutes, he read before a paper vanished. Thomas also will take longer on editing by about fifteen minutes. Logan frowned slightly, running his running the numbers in his head. What time does that take the process to? He asked. Roman shrugged carelessly, less smug. You are the living calculator. You should get the numbers, right? Logan scowled, even as he added the extra time and adjusted the whole process in his head. I'm not a robot, he said evenly, ignoring the small pinprick of hurt that flared in his chest. Here. He conjured the whole video plan on a piece of paper, complete with time frames. Give this to Thomas. Thanks, Logan. Prince smiled brightly before leaning in slightly, resting his hand on the logical side of his shoulder. Look, I know you're Mr. Logical Lottery, but you should loosen up a bit, yeah? If you have any dreams or a wish list you want to fulfill, I can help. Logan shook off Roman's hand and stepped back. I do not waste time on trivial things such as dreams, he said. I live in reality. Roman sighed. Okay, fine. I'll get this to Thomas. Thanks, Logan. He disappeared with another soft pop, and Logan let out a frustrated breath, taking his glasses off and rubbing at the bridge of his nose. Roman did not mean to press on such sensitive matters, but Logan couldn't help but believe the royal purposefully lashed out at him sometimes. He stepped back into his room and closed the door, sitting at his desk again. This time, he was sorting through YouTube and Twitter comments, seeing what themes Thomas's viewers wanted incorporated into videos. It was a tiring process, and it required a full field of focus, but Logan found himself enjoying the task. Many of Thomas's fans had taken to the chemistry between the sides, and there were many suggestions that seemed to make perfect sense. Logan noted them all down trying to ignore the photos of cosplayers. It still made him smile to think that there were people in the world that dressed up as him. He was not one for sentimentities, but it was enjoyable to browse the many pictures of fans who wore the polos and neckties with pride. Many groups of friends dressed up as the sides together, but Logan found particular enjoyment out of those who decide his look was best for singular photos. Of course, those cosplays were often overshadowed by the other three. Still, Logan indulged in the art of dress-ups for longer than usual, something bittersweet clouding his judgment slightly. He'd just closed Twitter and moved to YouTube when there was a familiar soft pop of someone appearing. "'You missed lunch,' Patton said, and Logan turned around to face him. Morality held a plate of food, including a chicken and cheese sandwich and a leafy green salad. In his other hand, held a glass of orange juice. I know you like a balanced lunch, so I thought I'd bring it up to you. Logan smiled. It felt slightly awkward and unnatural, but it passed. Patton brightened and moved towards him, setting the glass and plate on his desk. Thank you, Patton, Logan said thankfully, turning back to his laptop. What you doing? Logan wrote something down. I'm gathering data from Thomas's fan base and deciding what to add to improve the success rate of future videos. Oh. 
Penny went quiet for a moment. Logan worked comfortably, taking the odd bite of food every now and then. Hey, <laughs> Penn said, suddenly giggling. Look, people are referring our cartoon video in the comments. I guess they like the different style. Logan pierced his lips thoughtfully. Different style of character, he wrote. Thanks for lunch, Patton, Logan said, keeping his eyes glued to the screen as he finished his glass of orange juice. I apologize for not coming out of my room and missing it today. <laughs> no problem, Patton said cheerfully. I figured you were busy with something important. I'll leave you to it. Logan's fingers faltered as Patton vanished, and he stared at the screen blankly for a few seconds. A common theme he found amongst commons was his adamantly blanked appreciation for Patton. He found that such moments often summoned the subtle hints that he wasn't such a robot when morality was around. He shook his head slightly. He wasn't a robot. Thank you so much for listening. My links are in the description below, as well as the links to the author's works. There's also a link to a Google form where you can recommend fanfiction for the future, and especially one of my links to my Etsy shop where I make a lot of cool beaded things called candy, if you've heard of it. Yes. With that, we're going to wrap up for today. Thank you so much for watching, and like always, do your best.